Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and today I'm going to be showing you how to install the DEN Smart Light Switch. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so today we're going to be installing the DEN Smart Light Switch. Now, if you're not sure what the DEN system is, DEN is a home automation system for us primarily in the UK and also takes into consideration those of us that don't have the additional neutral wires available at our sockets or switches. Now for smart devices this is uh, pretty much a necessity but then I've come up with a really smart way of actually storing the power from the light socket to power the switch itself. So I'm not going to go into too much detail on how the technology works but I am going to go into detail on how to actually install the switch into your home. Now I'm going to be installing this onto a single gang switch which is a one-way switch um, if your electricity differs in any way, shape or form, please do consult a trained electrician or a professional. Now, obviously, that goes without saying, that is a big disclaimer, electricity is dangerous and can kill you. So if you're in any way unsure, I cannot stress this enough, please do consult someone who's a professional or has knowledge of electrics or electronics. So the things we're going to need for this installation, first of all, obviously, is the smart light switch itself. Um, possibly a couple of screwdrivers, I've got a couple of flathead screwdrivers to loosen the terminals. Also, you'll need the DEN Smart System app on your mobile device to actually set up the switch for its automation, that kind of thing, and to pair it with the rest of the system. So that is pretty much it. So let's have a look first of all and see what we actually get in the box for this smart switch. So you get a instruction guide and there's pamphlet in there which goes through the whole installation process so if you want to you can just read that instead so you get a let's get started manual and safety and warranty information again if you're not sure please do read the safety information it is very important this could be very dangerous so here is the switch itself and as you can see it's a uh, almost regular one gang switch or one way switch with our powered button, which is fantastic for those of us with uh, smart technology or wanting to have automation in our house. The connections on the top, you've got options for uh, Earth, Live, L1 and L2. So if you're using this in a two-way system or two-way lighting system, you'll be taking advantage of the L2 section. But for us in this particular installation, we're just gonna be using L1, L and the Earth. Now what we will also be taking or making use of in this installation, is going to be the spacer. Now these sockets, because they do contain technology in the back of them, they're a little bit deeper than your regular switches. So we're going to be using a 10 mil spacer to bring the switch out from the wall a little bit. If you've got a 30 mil or larger back box in your wall, then you won't need this. I've only got 25 mil ones, so I do need this spacer to give me the extra room for the installation. Uh, also, because I'll be using the, the back box or the back box extender, also, we'll be using the longer screws as well. These are included in the package, so if you are using the, uh, the spacer shim, you can use the longer screws. If you're not gonna be using the spacer shim, obviously use the screws that are in your existing box. Uh, also, what we'll be needing to use in this as well is our an additional earth cable. Uh, this will connect the earth from the switch itself to your earth in the back of your back box. Uh, again, this is very important and is necessary to complete the job and also to keep it safe. So that's all the bits we're going to be using. Let's head over to the switch and take off the old one and start the installation process. Okay, so here we are on the other side of the studio. Now this is the switch that I'm wanting to replace. Um, there's nothing actually wrong with the switch itself. I just want to automate the process so that when I'm sat down over the other side of this desk and trying to make videos, then I can just ask the Google Assistant to turn lights on, turn lights off, that kind of thing. So if I've got my mic pack connected or whatever, and I'm kind of tethered to the desk over there. I don't want to be able to get up, walk all the way around to the switch when I can do it automatically. Now I could have used a smart bulb, but unfortunately in this particular instance, I've actually got a ceiling fan set up. So there is a permanent live going to the ceiling fan itself, but the light is controlled from here, power on and off. So uh, yeah, it's not as simple as it could be. If it was just a standard pendant light, that would be a lot easier. But at least with this, I'm gonna be able to turn the light on and off as I wish. Anyway, I'm digressing. So first thing to do, uh, to save damage in any of your surroundings, I would suggest getting a, a credit card or a plastic spatula and just gently go around the edges. If you have a um, wallpaper 
or anything like that, or even if it is painted and you just put the socket onto or the switch onto your paint surface, just go around it and trim it just to loosen it off a little bit. Now I've already done that uh, before because I've had to take this switch off, so it's not a problem. Uh, what you will need, like I said, is a couple of screwdrivers. Now I've got flathead screwdriver, small, medium. So the medium size is gonna be good for these screws. The smaller one is gonna be okay for the electrical connections on the back. Now, before you go any further, if you're trying to do this for yourself, make sure your electricity is off. So turn the switch on and off. Now we've got no lights coming on. Also go to the fuse box and put a label on the fuse, just if there's anyone else in the house, just so they don't accidentally turn it back on by mistake. If you've left maybe the understairs cupboard open and the doors are open and you've got the switch there, somebody could go in there and turn the switch on, which could cause an injury or even worse. So safety first, make sure the everything is turned off. If you're not sure, turn off all the electricity in the house. Uh, that is possibly the safest way of doing it. Just hit the fuse box, turn the lot off. That way you're totally sure. For me, luckily, uh, when we wired this house up, we put in some separate systems. So we've got all of the lights on a separate fuse or all the light switches for the downstairs on a separate fuse. So it's uh, totally cool. There's nobody else here in the house at the moment. So no one's gonna come in and turn the switches on so I'm safe. Um, you can buy things like um, breaker locks that you can put on. So if you are working on these, then you can put a lock on. I'll put links in the description for Amazon and that sort of thing. So if you do want to get one of those to be ultra safe, then you can purchase one of those. But we're sure that the electricity is off. So we check the switches. We've got nothing live here, so we're good to go. So with the flathead screwdriver, just loosen off the screws. And also when you're doing electrical work, just remember, it isn't a race. It's not who finishes first is the best. It's finishing the job in one piece and with it actually working. That is the most important bit. So just take your time, be sensible, be careful, and most will be safe. So we're taking our screws out, so we'll put those to one side, but we won't be reusing those, we'll be using the longer ones. And just so you can see for reference, I'm not sure if you're gonna be able to pick that up, but. You can see the screws are a little bit longer to take into account the uh, back box spacer that we're gonna be using. Okay, so there is our switch removed from the wall. So on the back, we've got our common or live going at the top of the switch. And at the bottom, we've got our L1 and L2. So that is our uh, return, as you can see by the black wire with the sleeving on. Now, if your wiring's different, do uh, take advantage of the uh, DEN system. They've actually got all the different wiring diagrams on their website. So just go to their website. Again, links will be in the description so you can check out for yourself. It's also in the safety manual as well. So again, if you've got any concerns or you're not sure, please do consult an electrician. So anyway, that's our wire. So let's release these. And it should be just a smaller screwdriver to get into these slightly older sockets. Now you'll notice in the background there, we've got our, uh, our live, our new, sorry, live, live, the return, and also we've got an earth there. Now we actually need to take a, a feed off of that earth in a minute with that wire to uh, go to the actual switch itself. So we'll be doing that again in a moment. So there we go. There is our wires released and our old switch off of the wall. So next thing is to, in my case, we're gonna use the spacer. So actually on the spacer, it does say on there, front, back, wall product. So you know which side is which, so just look at it and make sure you got it on right around the right way. So if we have that there, so that's what it's gonna look like when it's on. And again, that gives you a little bit more room in the back box to uh, tuck in your wire in. So the next thing to do is we're gonna add in our additional earth cable. Now for this, it may be difficult for you to see actually on the camera, I'll see if I can get some close-ups later. Um, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna loosen off the terminal there and then we're just gonna poke the earth wire inside the terminal and then we'll have an extra earth. So just loosen off a couple of turns and then you can stick your earth wire into that terminal and then make sure it's tightened back up again. When you do this, give the wires a little tug, gentle tug just to make sure that they're fixed in firmly uh, looks like we're pretty much good to go. So next thing we're gonna do now is get the switch and we're gonna connect up our terminals. So as I said earlier, we've got the terminals on the bottom. So we've got our L2, 
we've got our L1, we've got our L, which is live or common, and then we've got our ground. Now in this instance, we're not using the L2, like I said, because it's a one-way switch. So what I generally tend to do is, I'm not sure if you're even gonna be able to pick that up, but I try and uh, do the screw right up so that the screw won't come loose and short anything out. Probably not necessary, but I like to do it anyway. And when you're actually installing the switch as well, the uh, the DEN logo, which is in the bottom right-hand corner, should be in the bottom right-hand corner. So you can, if you want to, you could install it that way around, but then your switch is kind of in the wrong position. So the on-off are gonna be in the wrong, wrong ways. I like my switches to be like that when it's on and like that when it's off. So I'm gonna have my DEN logo on the uh, the bottom right. Obviously, if, depending on how you like your setup, you can do it entirely how you wish. So we've got our wires coming out now. So now it's just a matter of connecting those wires into our sockets here. So I'm gonna do the earth one first. And this is the earth, so I'm just gonna pop that in the back there. And make sure that's nice and tight. Give the, uh, the cable a little pull. That's in there nice and tightly. And try, if you can, to not have any wire showing, if at all possible. I mean, it's not imperative, but it's uh, it's good practice. So next one we're going to do is we're going to do the live, which goes in the next one here. Again, not sure if you can see that, but try and get the wire to sync right in to the actual holder, if possible. So there we go, There's we've got our live and we've also got our earth. And the last one now is our return, or whatever you wanna call it. Some people would call it a neutral, but um, I think of it as a return wire because when you press a switch, it returns the power back up to the switch. Okay, so when we're finished, that's what you should have uh, your switch looking like. So we've got our earth, we've got our live, and we've got our common return or L1 or however you want to call it. And just make sure that all the wires are secure and not gonna pop out. I think we're pretty much all good there. So now all we need to do is line the switch back up and tuck all the wires back in. And then we can uh, apply the power back again. So we're just gonna tuck these wires back in. I'm gonna move some of them around in the back box just to give it a bit more room. And line things up. And yeah, I think that's gonna fit pretty, uh, pretty well there. So now we need to put in the longer screws In fact, probably getting these screws to line up is possibly the hardest part of the job. Normally I suggest uh, getting one of the screws in, get that lined up, and then you can work on the second one. Now some people at this point may want to get a, uh, a level, a spirit level, and actually level up the switch. I think mine's pretty good. Right, there we go, nice and secure and a, a pretty decent fit. So now with that all done, what we can do is go back to our fuse box and turn the power on, and then we can go through the connectivity in the DEN app and get this thing up and running. Now, if at this point you've done something wrong and you go to flick up the breaker in your circuit box and it flicks straight off, then obviously you've done something wrong turn the power off completely again, remove all your wiring and double check it to make sure that you've done everything as it should be. Make sure there's no loose wires or make sure nothing has come loose in the back of the box. But we're pretty good, so we've tested that. We've turned it back on, the breaker hasn't tripped out, so we're all good on that point. So now we can try the switch, make sure it works. And you probably notice there's a little bit of difference, but we've got the studio lights on, so they're, using, they're doing most of the lighting duties at the moment. But there we go, the switch is fully working. So what we can do now is go into the DEN app, which I'll get up on my phone now. So I'm recording this out on my phone, so you can see it, it should be popping up over here somewhere. So first thing to do, open the DEN app. And first of all, it goes into your homepage. Now, for this point, I've actually set up my account, all that kind of stuff. Uh, when you set up your account, use an email address, they'll send you a activation via email, which you click on, and then that activates your account. It's all pretty straightforward. Uh, we did cover it in some of the previous video, which you can check out up over there. Uh, again, if you've got any comments or questions about how to set it up, feel free to go to the DEN website or let me know in the comment section below and I'll do what I can to help you. So first thing to do now is to click on the plus icon, which is in the top right hand corner of the screen. 
and we want to add a den product. So we scroll down through, there's lots of products you can add if you want to. There's a remote control, a motion sensor, a socket, and a dimmer switch, uh, and also the light switch, which is what we're gonna do now. So I'm gonna click on light switch. And as it says, here are just a few steps to set up and personalize your light switch. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. So it's now the app is looking for the new switch. Well, the app itself isn't the actual, the DEN base station, which is in the other room, which with the rest of our network and equipment, that is now looking for the switch. It's in kind of almost like a Bluetooth uh, visibility mode kind of thing. So we need to press and hold the DEN button for six seconds on the switch until the light begins to flash. So there's the DEN button, so we're gonna press and hold that. And hopefully, I'm not sure if you can see it, there is actually a flashing light actually on the switch there. Yeah, hopefully you're just getting that now. Now for some reason then, I'm not sure what it is, there is something about this room which is really annoying me for setting up Wi-Fi and Bluetooth stuff. There is something odd going on in this room, but for some reason it said it didn't find the switch. So I did the search again and it's found it. So it says, fine, the app is now connected to your one gang light switch. I'm gonna click OK or the tick button. Pretty much that is it. That's our switch set up in the app. So the app knows the switch is there. Uh, we can go ahead now, we can add, add a light. Uh, if you can actually see probably over there now, on the uh, the light bulb, there's actually a, like a timer going around. And that is the the recharging cycle. So the switch, or yeah, the switch itself actually stores a tiny bit of an electrical um, power to power the switch itself. So if you're trying to click it on and off really quickly within the app, you can't do that. There is a slight recharge time, so you do have to bear with it. Um, but as you can see now, that timer has finished. So I can press that, and now the switch comes on and the light comes on. Now you can probably see now it's illuminated green and you can probably just about make out that there is that timer going around the outside edge, which is when that's finished, that's when we'll be able to manually, or sorry, automatically turn it back off again. Right, so let's add a light while we're waiting for that. So now it says, which room is your light in? So we're gonna call this the dining room. Actually, no, let's call it studio because then that will make sense for the rest of my home automation equipment, so studio, click OK. And there we go, studio, so click on next. And now you can name your light. So what should we call that? Let's call that uh, ceiling light, because that's what it is. Click OK. And there we go, so one gang switch connected to the ceiling light in the studio, and we can click on finish. So that's it, now that device has been added to our DEN app and we can now uh, control that as we see fit. Now, once we've synchronized it with our Google Home system, we can then hopefully get Google to turn the light on and off, which is part and parcel of why I'm trying to do this. So at the moment you can see in the app, it says there's one light on. So we click on that in the app, you've got the ceiling light, there's one in the living room and ceiling light in the studio. So let's go ahead now and we'll turn that off. Pretty much instantaneous. The app is actually very responsive and works really, really well. So that is now in uh, recharging mode. Now, if you want to turn it back on, but you don't want to wait for it to go around, you can actually press the button and it says switch recharging. Do you want the switch to turn on once it is charged? So you click on yes. It will store that information. And then when the actual switch itself is recharged from that, I'm assuming there's some kind of uh, power draw from the circuit that goes back to the earth, which is very, very minimal, but not enough to trigger a fuse or a hazard or anything like that. So once that is charged up, you'll see the switch click back on. Hopefully any second now. The app is still going. There we go. It doesn't always take the full amount of time for the actual timer to go around. So it's about uh, 30 to 45 seconds, I think. Uh, you may correct me on that. Anyway, let's see if Google will actually now uh, turn off this light. If it is now on the system, it should be. Hey Google, turn off the studio ceiling light. The ceiling light is not ready. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna have to work on that. Hopefully when it's, uh, oh, that's because it's charging still. 
So if you're doing it from the Google app or from the um, Amazon Alexa, then obviously if the unit is still recharging, then you are gonna have to wait for that to uh, be ready for you. And that's almost gone around. So that's gone around. Let's see if we can get it to turn it off now. Hey Google, turn off the studio ceiling light. Okay, turning off the ceiling light. There we go. So once the battery had enough charge in the actual switch itself, it did what it's supposed to do. So there we go. We have got our Den one way or one gang light switch installed. Uh, hopefully this video was useful to you. If it was, don't forget to give the video a thumbs up. And if you want to see more Den products, let me know in the comment section below. And don't forget to subscribe and all that kind of good stuff. So I've been Mike. This has been the Den one gang light switch. And hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.